main target for today is that you'll be able to factor a trinomial into two binomials. And it sounds like you've already done that, and you have. But here's the new part. The new part is when the a value is greater than 1. So we're going to see numbers that have uh, a starting value bigger than 1 in front of the x squared. And we're going to be able to write an equivalent expression by reversing distribution. The state of New York finds this to be very important, that you can write equivalent expressions. And that's what we're really basing this on today. Uh, so... We're going to start off with factoring trinomials with a coefficient, that means a number, in front of x squared. So let's discover where these trinomials come from. They come from multiplying two binomials, right? It's always kind of seemingly starting from there lately. So how have we done this? We've broken this up into two parts, and we multiplied it by the second binomial. So we took the 2x, and we dropped it in front of the 5x plus 1, and wrote it as 2x times 5x plus 1. And we had to do that a second time, where we took the other number, the negative 3, and we showed it as distributing to 5x plus 1. Okay? So we break it up so that we can successfully multiply, successfully distribute. After that, it's the same rules that we've been working with, where we do 2x times 5x. Well, 2 times 5 is 10 and always will be 10. x times x means there's two x's, so x to the second power. You do it again for the 2x to the 1, so that it's 2x. And then we move on to the other set here, the other binomial where we distribute the negative 3, negative 15x, and negative 3. Now we said we're factoring trinomials, and we've got four pieces here. Well, the reason why we have four pieces is because these two can come together. They're like terms, they have the same variable, they have the same exponents. So 10x squared stays 10x squared. Positive 2 with negative 15. How about negative 13x and then minus 3? There you go for a trinomial. Apologies on the color. Um, of course. So we want to multiply the a and the c term together to get things started. And you're like, a and the c term, what are you talking about? These three numbers can actually be considered a, B, and C. So write in alphabetical order. And that is because they're in descending order by exponent. Remember we said that this is the standard form descending order when it goes X squared, X to the first, and then no variable. So A, B, and C. What we do is we multiply the A and the C term together. Well, that is going to be 10 times negative 3. And 10 times negative 3 is negative 30. Now, we want to make a list of factors. And we've been doing this quite a bit, so hopefully this is a review. 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 4 doesn't go in nicely, 5 times 6. Of that list of factors, we want to see which pair we can add to the B term. Now, when I say add, be careful there because sometimes it involves subtracting because we're adding a positive and a negative. But i got to try to make 13. Well, 1 and 30, not going to do it. Um, 2 and 15, possible. 3 and 10, possible. 5 and 6. So sometimes you've got two possibilities, and we've got to make sure uh, we can do both, which is multiply to negative 30 and then add to negative 13. So let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can make this happen. Um, the B term is negative 13, and we want to make sure that this adds the negative 13. So how about negative 15 plus 2? All right, that's going to be negative 30, uh, negative 13. And what about uh, negative 15 times 2? Yeah, that's a winner. All right, that's a winner right there. Those two numbers are going to be the ones that we want, 2 and 15. Uh, let's just disprove 3 and 10. So negative 13. Uh, in order to get to that, we would have to have negative 3 plus negative 10. That makes the negative 13. But guess what? A negative 3 times a negative 10 is positive 30, and that's just not going to work. All right. So because it doesn't work for both situations, we can't go with that one. So that one's out. Now, what do we do with all that? And it's kind of telling you here, use that pair of numbers to rewrite an equivalent expression with four terms instead of three. So what I mean by that is, still use the 10x squared, 
That's still the first part. But now I'm going to write negative 15x plus 2x. So this was our middle term, our negative 13. Now it's two pieces, and it's still minus 3. Okay? So a couple of things stayed the same. 10x squared stayed the same. Minus 3 stayed the same. But this new piece, this middle piece, well, was broken apart um, to make two pieces instead of one. And you're like, why in the world did that happen? Well, let's look back over here. To go from this step to this step, I went from four pieces to three. So I'm actually reversing that. And you can kind of see where we had the 2x and the negative 15. Um, I'm going to keep this going here. You're just going to have to trust me if this is not making too much sense. Now we're going to use the associative property to group the first two and the last two terms together. So we're going to add in parentheses. Let's get back to my colors here. And 10x squared minus 15x is going to go together. We're going to put the first two terms together. Uh, we are only adding, so do not think of this as multiplying yet. Then 2x minus 3. That's going to go together. So we kind of group those things. And we can do that because parentheses tell us what to do first. And if we can do those, we, we definitely try. Um, but we can't. We cannot subtract unlike terms. So we move on. We then go to the method of GCF, where we want to try to get the greatest common factor out of each. So, whew, I know this seems like a lot. 10x squared minus 15x. It has a greatest common factor. Oh boy. Oh. I've given myself no ability to to finish this. Oh my goodness. Usually with a smart board it would at least group it. All right, sorry about that. So, we want to try to figure out what they have in common. Well, 10 10 and 15 both have a 5 that we could draw out of that. x squared and x, they have at least one x in common. So we divide by 5x. We divide by 5x. That's not an 8. My pen is not lifting off the board. 5x. What's left goes in parentheses. So 10 divided by 5 makes 2. x squared divided by x leaves us with an x. 15 divided by 5 is 3, a negative 3, and x over x cancels. So I got it down back into that distrib distribution form. we got to do it again, uh, and we got to do it again for this piece right here. So 2x minus 3, and we want to rewrite this as a GCF and whatever's inside. Now... Sometimes the only thing they have in common is 1, because there's only 1x, and 2 and 3 are both prime. So actually, 1 is the greatest common factor. And if you were to divide these by 1, that's not going to change anything. So 2x minus 3 is still the binomial. And you're like, what in the heck is going on here? Well, let me go back to what we did from the start. And what we did from the start is we started off with this setup, right? Remember how we broke it up into two parts? We had distribution and distribution. We're right back to that same idea, okay? We are kind of starting this process from the reverse. Here, I have the same binomial here and here, all right? The 2x plus, or 2x minus 3. I'm not sure if that's a great color. Is that a, is that a bad color? Let's go with a better color. There we go, something a little bit brighter. So that's going to go down. And then I just take these two pieces and put those back together. And sure enough, we've done it. We've gone full circle where what we started with, all right, this problem right here, we're now back to it. All right. So go with whites because I got this big chalkboard here to use. So Let's make sure we first uh, label the letters. So we're going to label these. Remember, if they're in descending order, it's A, it's B, it's C. Knowing that setup is going to be pretty important to what we do for the rest of the problem. From here, the first step was to multiply the A and the C term. 
okay? So the a and the c term here are 3 and negative 4. So I multiply those, I get negative 12. Next up, i got to write a factor list, okay? So 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, 4 times 3, you're repeating yourself, okay? If it feels like I'm going kind of fast with this, again, this has all been review, so I'm hoping that this is something that we can handle. From there, i got to figure out which terms can add to the middle one. All right, you can't see what and white, but anyways, which one's going get to get to positive 11? Well, 2 and 6, no way. 3 and 4, no way. So it's got to be 1 and 12. So I rewrite this as 3x squared, the same first piece, and the same last piece, except I'm splitting this up into two different parts. All right, so again, um, I need positive 11. So I'm going to go minus 1 and positive 12. Now these do have an x in them. And think about it. If you were just to simply add these together, you're going to get 11x. So if you were kind of working this backwards and combining like terms, you'd have that final answer as a trinomial. I'm trying to get back to two binomials. I'm trying to get back to what this all started as. From here, we group. And this time, I'm not going to have you rewrite it. Well, yeah, let's rewrite it. Um, we're going to put the first two terms together, group those together. We're only adding here. Then we're going to put the next two terms together. Now, i got to try to find the GCF in both of these. There's got to be a greatest common factor here and a greatest common factor here. 3x squared minus 1x, there's no number they have in common, but they both have an x. Okay? So... I'm going to take an x away. And so it's going to be x out here. And then what's left is 3, but only 1x. And then negative 1 um, is going to be left because the x is coming out. So because of this, I've divided out an x. I've taken 1 away. Next up over here, what's the GCF? 12 and 4. Well, it's got to be 4, right? So 4 is going to divide both pieces and end up with the 4 out in front. 12 divided by 4, 3, 4 divided by 4, minus 1. And look at that. We have created the same binomial, right? The same binomial that we probably had in this position. It was the second one because what I did is I took the x and the 4 and I broke it up into two parts so that I could distribute it to the second binomial. All right, so there you have it. That's it. All she wrote. We've successfully gone from a trinomial into two binomials. So hopefully seeing the second time, we're like, okay, that's not so bad. Didn't look as bad as it did on the first page when I kind of broke it up and tried to do it step by step. So we've got A, we've got B, we've got C. It's in alphabetical order. And remember, the first thing we do is multiply the a and the c. So a times c, 10 times 2, not difficult, just 20. So we got the number we're going to try to factor. So we're going to factor and do 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 3 doesn't go into 20, 4 times 5, that's it. We're going to repeat ourselves after that. So just three possibilities. We got to try to make 9. We want to try to make this b term right here. It's not going to happen with 1 and 20. It's not going to happen with 2 and 10. All right? 4 and 5 is our key. So we're going to go from 3 down to 4 terms. So again, we're reversing the process of multiplying binomials. 10x squared still there. Um, 4 and 5, it's positive 9. So positive 4x, positive 5x, plus 2. And I'm going to answer the question that you all want to ask but are just too shy to right now doesn't matter the order of the 4x and the 5x and the answer is no it does not matter the order and so how, let's try to break this up into two binomials so 10x squared plus 4x group the first two we're only adding here and then we're going to group the second two together we just kind of put those together because we want to find out what those two things have in common so here 10x and 4x. What do they have in common? How about a 2x? And 5x and 2, they don't have anything in common 
but there's always a one that we could take out. We'll pull out the greatest common factor and rewrite it as 